welcome to this week's episode of Wide Angle. The world is watching with great interest developments in the island nation of the Maldives in the Indian Ocean that declared emergency. President Yamin decided to go ahead with this uh, drastic step after the Supreme Court of the Maldives uh, declared that political prisoners must be released. Now, this uh, development has obviously set alarm bells ringing in many of uh, the Maldives' neighboring nations. It's exiled and ousted President Nasheed has put India in a strange quandary by going public with his demand uh, that India send in troops and intervene militarily to restore what he says is his legitimate government in power. To talk about this and how India will deal with this, former Foreign Secretary Sham Saran, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Um, can India go in militarily? That's the question everyone's asking. <laughs> Well, I don't think it is so much a question of uh, can India intervene militarily. I think it's more a question of uh, does India wish to hmm. uh, intervene and as you said, should it mm -hmm. in, in such circumstances. So that's a different uh, issue. Uh, let me say with respect to the uh, statement of uh, former President Nasheed that you referred to. Um, I would uh, say that uh, perhaps by making such a public statement, he has probably made uh, any prospect of intervention by India that much more complicated. Hmm. Yeah. It would have been preferable if he had not made such a public uh, demand. And um, also, I think uh, in respect of uh, such interventions, uh, what is very uh, important is the element of surprise, mm -hmm. uh, the swiftness with which an intervention takes place. Uh, because uh, there may be arguments about whether or not we should wait and see how the situation evolves before taking such a decision. But in uh, many circumstances, you know, it is um, the speed with which you intervene that sometimes determines whether or not you achieve your objectives. Right. So, a lot of people who are sort of advocating for uh, some sort of intervention by the Indians are going back to talking about Operation Cactus in 1988, uh, where the, the legitimate president of the Maldives at the time had invited uh, the Indian government for and asked them for help. Here that that demand or that request is coming from an exiled opposition leader, not the ruling government well, as right I now. I mentioned that uh, precisely for that reason, it has made uh, the any such uh, uh, consideration of an intervention option that much more complex. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as far as legitimacy that you are uh, talking about, uh, there are a whole lot of illegitimate things that this president has done. That's right. You know, um, the fact that he has uh, arrested the chief justice of the Supreme Court and another justice um, leaned upon the remaining judges to, in a sense, reverse the decision, decision that was taken right. on um, the opposition uh, leaders. Uh, so those cannot be, by any stretch of imagination, uh, considered to be legitimate political behavior. Correct. Uh, so uh, one could make out a case uh, for intervention uh, to ensure that uh, constitutionalism comes back uh, to the Maltese. Uh, but as I said, I mean, such situations are always very, very complicated. There are so many moving parts in the situation. And um, any such decision will have a downside, may have a positive side. It's very difficult to even predict what the outcome of such an intervention could so, be. We know for the last, uh, what is it now, five years roughly since 2013 when President uh, Yamin uh, has uh, sort of been in power, uh, the relationship between Malay and Delhi has been tenuous and tense. It started with uh, the revo revocation of a contract for the building of the airport for the Chinese investment in the Maldives. Now we're hearing that the Maldives has sent three envoys to what they're calling friendly countries to explain this entire political development. Mm. Um, it's unclear whether India is on that list of friendly countries or not, but one of the reports seem to indicate the countries like China, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan. This would be kind of, you know, if India is going to manage the situation, it also has to make sure it doesn't poke the China bear too much uh, as well. How, how will this work out? Well, as, a, uh, as uh, should be obvious, I mean, the situation today is very different from the last occasion where India um, intervened militarily. Uh, 
uh, not in terms of capability, as I mentioned, but um, the political uh, consideration. Geopolitical, you know, situation has changed, and China, as you say, has become an important player. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a very important player already in the Maldives itself, and so you would have seen the statement issued by the Chinese Foreign Ministry. That's right. Uh, while it has not named India, but it has very clearly uh, signaled that uh, it would oppose any kind of intervention uh, to try and uh, deal with the political situation inside uh, the Maldives. Global Times has actually come out with an article which quite <laughs> clearly um, says that India should stay India away. Should stay away. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in, in that sense, we are facing a more um, a difficult uh, uh, situation. Uh, but let me uh, say that in terms of making any kind of um, uh, decision on this, mm -hmm. the, uh, you have to take into account the fact that, number one, this is a very strategically located uh, island country mm -hmm. uh, just south of India. Um, it uh, is absolutely integral to any kind of Indian Ocean strategy right. that you wish right. to uh, pursue. Um, if it does become a kind of a, a, a jumping off point for China mm -hmm. uh, in the region, uh, it would hugely complicate our security situation. Right. Uh, so I am um, not saying yes, go and intervene, but I think in taking a decision, this backdrop needs to be, you know, always kept in mind because uh, if the situation goes beyond a certain threshold, mm -hmm. reversing it will be that much more difficult. Mm -hmm. Meaning thereby that if you have Chinese entrenching themselves, like you know they have been given lease of one of the atolls. Right, you absolutely. Know, um, if like Humban Tota, <laughs> it becomes again something which is sold off to a Chinese uh, state company uh, because the Maldives is not able to pay some debt on pay some other debts, project. Right. Uh, you are going to be facing a very, very difficult situation. Your space, you know, strategic space is going to shrink. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I think uh, in, in coming to any decision on how we handle this, uh, military option is one option, but there are other options uh, as well. Are we able to, for example, get some other uh, important countries involved in any kind of uh, you know, uh, action with respect to what's happening in the uh, Maltese. You know, we have the Quad now. Correct, uh, exactly. You have the uh, Australia, the United States, Japan. I is there something that uh, the four can Andrew. actually do together? in order to try and see, see how this situation can be dealt with. Right. In fact, that's bring, that brings me to my next question because uh, the United States has also issued its travel advisories and raised concerns over these developments in, in the Maldives. Uh, India has chosen to follow that same uh, pattern of the travel advisory right now. The Maldives well, is so don't heavily... Don't forget that even the Chinese have uh, The Chinese have done the same <laughs> thing. Absolutely. Yes. The Chinese have done the same thing. So that's one sort of soft measure which is also tough in its own way because tourism is such a huge part of the Maldivian economy. A travel advisory would certainly put some pressure on, on industry over there. Um, but you you said that you know could something be done with the quad? Could they look at some sort of as as a possible so uh, option? If you were to sort of hypothesize on what could those options well, these be? are four very important countries, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I would imagine that uh, just as uh, our security interests are involved, uh, so are theirs. Right. No, don't forget that Diego Garcia is not very far not very away far. from the Maldives. Um, so, uh, in terms of um, you know having to deal with a situation which could be inimical not only to India's interests but to the interests of some of the other major powers in the region, uh, this is something which requires perhaps sitting down and, and, and thinking about this and see how uh, we can deal with it. Uh, now, I am not saying um, that uh, they should together uh, say intervene militarily. There may be some diplomatic options. Uh, mention has been made of the fact that this is going to be now considered before the Security Council. Is there some kind of you know, diplomatic pressure which mm -hmm. can be brought on uh, the present uh, regime in uh, the Maldives uh, to reverse this situation? to uh, you know uh, really implement what the uh, 
uh, Supreme Court has said. Uh, so one of the things, uh, just as somebody who sort of watches foreign policy and watches the theories of real politics at play, uh, this Maldives situation has thrown up many interesting questions, uh, especially you know in the last 10, 12 years, uh, well since 2001 actually, 16 years since the war on terror uh, actually began, there's been this argument on what is an, a Western liberal concept of democracy and what are Eastern concepts and regimes operate differently and you may not always uh, like the answers democracy throws up. You hear these debates all the time. This situation in the Maldives, do you think it fits into any part of those conversations and puzzles? I mean, how well, would you... Uh, if by any uh, version of democracy that you wish to this is talk not about, a, yeah. uh, this is unconstitutional behavior. Correct. Uh, so, even if it was... A, a not a democratic country in the sense that we we talk about. The fact is that you have a uh, president uh, who is flouting a decision taken by an institution which is recognized in the constitution of that country. Right. Whether it is a democracy or not. Correct. Fair so enough. So it's a it's a question of respecting the rule of law, respecting uh, institution which everyone has recognized as having a legitimate hmm. place hmm. Uh, in that in that uh, political or governance uh, structure so i would not like to get into that argument correct okay the fact is that here you have a, uh, a government and if we use the real politic argument from india's perspective for the reasons that i mentioned you are your security interests are under threat right absolutely. there's no doubt about no that doubt so about i that. would uh, not necessarily bring in the democracy or no democracy argument. Just keep it simple, uh, basically. It is, it is uh, something which could uh, gravely complicate your uh, maritime strategy. And uh, you have to look at what the implications could be. You see, I, I have spoken about, say, what the Chinese have done in the South China Sea. Right. You know, what do you do? You start off with small steps. Mm -hmm. Each step does not is not big enough to invite a reaction. But cumulatively over a period of time, a series of steps creates a change in the facts, facts on the ground. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes very difficult to reverse that or to deal with that. Right. So here also my plea is that we should look at what could happen going forward if this situation is not addressed. Not only because Oh, this man is pro-Chinese, but he may have put himself in a position where it may be very difficult for him to resist going forward. Demands that may be made. So, sir, that. in a sense, even though uh, Nasheed may have put India in a quandary in, in terms of how to respond publicly to this, the facts, as you point out, also bear themselves out that this is a geostrategic uh, situation that we are finding ourselves in right now. It needs to be addressed by New Delhi. The other argument that one has heard for the last few years uh, in the Maldives is also sort of in terms of the, the radicalization argument. There are concerns about what, what's going on sure. in the Maldives. So, Whichever way you sort of slice and dice it, there is so, an argument being made for India to go in. So, uh, uh, argument being made to India that it needs to deal with this situation. Mm -hmm. Now, the military response is not the only response. What other things could Well, as be? I mentioned yeah. to you, I mean, is it possible for other major uh, countries who also have important stakes in this particular part of the world, uh, are they prepared to work together? Are they prepared to, for example, work together through the uh, United Nations? You know, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of what kind of uh, pressures can we bring to bear? Uh, on this, I mean, you know, people sanctions. have talked about uh, sanctions, uh, people have uh, talked about, you know, even I saw a report that uh, India may be asking Saudi Arabia uh, to use its influence over yes. Yemen to try and uh, try and reverse the situation. So there are, I think there may be some balls in play which are not visible to uh, us. Uh, I'm sure that this government is very much... Uh, uh, aware of uh, the implications that I mentioned, but uh, I don't think we should make the mistake of thinking it's a question of do we go in or do we not go in. You know, I, it's not as uh, simple as that. Right. Uh, any military intervention uh, 
has to take into account very carefully what the possible consequences could be because the morning after is also very important mm -hmm. you know in terms of you know uh, any and taking any such uh, decision and traditionally india has been very cautious before taking any uh, steps towards military intervention oh, yes, yes. i mean and rightly so yeah. rightly so for the reasons that i uh, mentioned so uh, it needs to be a mix of different uh, you know uh, sort of responses. also so one question whenever india has acted uh, or intervened militarily in the past it's been restricted to the immediate region and sort of the, the geopolitical um, uh, region of geopolitical influence. We've been seeing periodic demands for India to you know, send boats on the ground in other wars and other conflicts in other parts of the world. Um, how does a foreign policy thinker such as you balance those different pulls and pressures and arguments when there is a clear need for some action and some balls you know, to be the, in play here. The bottom line is, do you have the resources to be able to carry something like this out? Secondly, uh, you have to take into account, is this a short, swift operation? Mm -hmm. Like it happened in 1998, you went in, you secured the place and, and you, you came out. out. Yeah. You know? um, in another case, that did not happen with the IPKF in Sri Lanka, it did That's not right. happen, you know. Uh, so we should not blunder into that kind of a situation. So uh, I'm not saying that there is a blanket sort of, uh, you know, uh, no intervention or no boots on the ground. There may be occasions where uh, very, very vital Indian, Indian interests are involved and uh, that may be the only way to mm -hmm. secure your interest, particularly, as you mentioned, in the neighborhood. And mm -hmm. that is what has happened in the in the in the in past. terms of priority that exactly would be i mean like uh, mrs gandhi's uh, for example assistance to uh, nevin uh, in 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 or uh, to uh, unu to in in uh, myanmar or uh, in sri lanka when the jvp Correct, you know, yes. uh, uh, insurgency came up so there have been those instances where uh, clearly uh, india has felt that on balance it is an Indian, uh, national, is in interest Indian national interest to do it and we have the capability to carry it through. Uh, so in this case also, you would have to make a similar calculation. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, I don't think that we should uh, look at this as something you know, that India being uh, now a major power uh, should demonstrate this by <laughs> you know, willingness yeah. to intervene more uh, than in the past. I don't think we should use that metric. Uh, to determine whether or not because the ones who are calling or advocating for it are demanding the sort of show of muscularity no i don't think we should uh, do this kind of uh, show of uh, muscularity because sometimes that uh, you know pushes you into a corner uh, in coming back will you be know difficult. You, you become a prisoner of your own rhetoric so i would not certainly uh, you know go in that uh, direction so um, uh, coming back to uh, the maldives uh, as i said uh, there is no doubt in my mind that uh, what happens in Maldives will have a very major impact on India's maritime security. Mm -hmm. No doubt about that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, whatever we do has to be against that backdrop. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind that if there is, as a result of what is happening, as a result of what has happened so far, if you are going to have uh, a Chinese presence, a strong Chinese presence entrenched in this island chain, uh, it will gravely restrict, constrain uh, your, your uh, security uh, choices. Right. So, uh, the MEA <laughs> issued a statement essentially saying they were watching and they were disturbed by the developments in the Maldives. It was um, a show of concern and yet not an alarming statement. One, expected, one expects India to be disturbed by these developments. Um, he said the emergency is about 15 days is the term that he had given. We're already a few days into that. The Maldives are sending out envoys. Um, do you think that, uh, you know, is time of the essence right now, even as India weighs its options about what it can do? Is, I mean, do we wait well, till the 15 uh, days is over? You know, a very difficult, uh, you know, dif decision uh, on that uh, account. Um, the reason why uh, I worry a little more is uh, precisely because we may be getting into a situation 
for example if we go uh, through the diplomatic front right okay say at the united nations mm -hmm. what will china's attitude be say in the security council if some resolution comes up you know condemning uh, in fact, there are reports uh, of the UN meeting on this uh, in so, the next two days. Uh, so, uh, we should be conscious of the fact that you may get blocked by China uh, in any kind of a diplomatic, uh, you know, response that you may you may try to try to uh, construct. Uh, so, there are various kinds of scenarios that you have to take into account. Uh, before you uh, before you go in a in a certain certain direction so um, a, the uh, don't forget that today uh, china is in a position at least diplomatically to provide the kind of shield that yamin may be looking for mm -hmm. now in providing that shield he may i mean china may <laughs> demand even more concessions uh, after all, this is what has happened in the past, say with Myanmar. Right. When Myanmar was isolated, when it was being, you know, uh, isolated in the United Nations, for example, um, it was also an opportunity for China, which it leveraged, uh, you know, very skillfully. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should be conscious of that as well, that we don't get into a situation where our attempt to try and isolate uh, the Maldives pushes them closer to pushes China. them in a not necessarily by choice, but by compulsion mm -hmm. in a situation where their vulnerability to Chinese demands, especially for say some kind of a security pre presence, that vulnerability increases. Mm -hmm. You know, we are not so much worried about Yamin as such, but we are worried about what the current developments may mean in terms of India's own interests. That should be the guiding principle. Right, Mr. Saran, thanks so much for speaking to Wide Angle because as, as we pointed out right in the beginning, um, given the, the presence of the Maldives in India's direct neighborhood, its strategic significance, you know, all ties, we are all members of the SARC uh, regional grouping as well. I think everyone's watching sure. Delhi right now to see what uh, what yeah. the lead should be on the not Maldives. a not a very enviable situation, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have I have confidence in our uh, colleagues in the foreign ministry to deal and with. And I this. think the challenge is not to let any political rhetoric kind of get in the way of any decision uh, making uh, over here. We, we should not, should not. I mean, uh, whether in terms of muscularity or whether in terms of you know we should be hands off. I think uh, we should deal with it uh, in in a in a sober in a calm uh, manner, taking into account, as I said. Uh, the factors which are important in terms of safeguarding India's interests. That is the bottom line as far as I am concerned. Thank you so much okay. for speaking Thank to us, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.